now uh, introduce to you, uh, who's sitting over there with his red rose out, Lloyd Russell Moyles. He is the candidate, Labour's candidate for Brighton Kemp Town. Lloyd, I'd like to ask you a question. Labour ever won in Sussex in 1964 when Dennis Hopton uh, held Kemp Town by just seven votes from the Tories. Uh, and I'm hoping that Lloyd will do better than that, but to be honest, one vote would be enough. <laughs> Lloyd, tell us a bit about how it's going with the campaign. Um, what is fascinating about Kemp Town is we have three areas in, 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 the, uh, in the constituency. Three are strong Conservative, three are strong Labour. And let's be very clear, and we all know this, but I try and drill it home every time. The key is turnout. In our three held Labour seats at the last general election where we lost by 690, our turnout was under 50% in our three Labour wards, under 50%, 45, 47, and 50. In the conservative areas of the, um, of the constituency, where there's used to be until last month some UKIP councillors and the rest were all conservative, um, the turnout was all above 60, 65, 70. But the reality is, of course, those who need it the very most are unlikely to turn out and vote. And so that's why we have a ginormous task on our hands to get people to vote. What I can say to you is that the response on the doorstep, and I was involved in the last campaign, um, I was a candidate in the seat next door, um, but I spent almost all my time here working for Nancy Pratt, who was our candidate in Kemp Town. Um, the response this time is even better in our areas because of the harm that the Tories have done to people. I knock on doors that in 2015, student houses where apathy was high, they'd been lied to by the Liberal Democrats and they didn't really trust any politicians. I now knock on the doors and I can't give out the posters quick enough to some of those students in those houses. Or I knock on the doors in Whitehall, which is one of the most deprived wards in the southeast, um, and people will say you have to get rid of the Conservatives that are punishing me on the bedroom tax, but changing the rules of social housing. So if I move, I'll lose my life tenancy. And we have this horrible situation now that if you move a house. If you do a council house swap, you're only on a rolling five-year contract. But if you stay where you are, you're punished with this awful tax. You know? And so you're damned if you do, and if you're damned if you don't. In our constituency, where we have the hospital, which is in special measures, we have an ambulance trust that is in special measures, we have a CCG that is described as failing, we have a mental health service that is described as failing. You almost could not make it up the problems in the health service that people have seen. In the youth club that I'm a trustee of, the young people tell me they wait at least 12 months, if not longer, to see a counsellor. It's just far too late. In Whitehall, where the youth club is, every year in the last seven years, we've had a young person die, generally because of suicide. That is the kind of rate that the Tories are, uh, the, the damage that the Tories are doing. And so it's so important in this, in this election to turn it around. And I think we can. But it's going to be darn tight. It's going to be darn tight because the Conservatives do campaigning differently, of course, to how we do it. They go under the radar. They send direct mails out. They do telephone calls. They do quiet house-to-house -house calling that none of us notice. And it's so easy to get into a false sense of security that we are on track. You walk around some of the wards, even some of the Conservative wards, and you see Labour posters up and you think, oh, we're on track to win. But we're not yet. 
And that's why, I guess, if you're here for a bit longer, I'd urge you to come out and help us. And if you're going back to wherever your home constituencies are, it's so important to get out and to campus. Our office that we share with um, Pavilion, for a little bit longer at least, um, in the city is at 11 Dorset Street, which is just beyond the pier. We're out here every evening from 6 o'clock, so tomorrow you can come and join us at 6 o'clock. We would love to see you. Um, and on Saturday, we've got a trade union action day, leaving again from the office and the verdict, which is a, a, um, a, a cafe and jazz club around the corner. And so if you're here on Saturday, come and join us. I have to say thank you to the absolute fantastic support that we received from trade unions. The FBU um, in the, the local regional office have lent us whatever resources that we would want, the GMB, uh, my union, and Unite, um, and uh, ASLA uh, really supporting and getting behind the campaign. But we can't just do it with money because it's such a short campaign. We've got to do it with people on the streets. Um, I'll leave you with, I'm not going to talk for any much longer, um, I've got to get back to print out more direct mails and more leaflets, we've got to get out there. But what I would say is there's a lot of people in Brighton and around the UK that desperately need a Labour government. And what we hear in the media about Corbyn being so repulsive <laughs> is just not true. I've canvassed for the Labour Party for 10, 15 years, um, and in every election I have knocked on doors and there's been complaints about our leaders. And there's no more complaints about our leaders this time. Maybe one a day. Well, our last time I had one a day about Ed Miliband and his sandwich eating techniques. Before that I had one a day about Gordon Brown and his bigot comment. Before that I had we always will have people complaining about our leader. But the difference with the Labour Party as opposed to the Conservative Party, which is just about you know, a dem demagogic leader that they've got, is that we are a party of collectives. We are a party of many people. And so yes, we might have a leader that one or two people don't like, but if we didn't have had Jeremy, we wouldn't have a manifesto that is going down like a storm on the doorstep. We wouldn't have had policies that include ending the misery of commuters that we have faced in this city for the last year, if not five years, under Southern Rail and longer. Building a new railway line, investing in infrastructure, building houses, 10% of our city are on the housing register waiting for a council house. 10% of people that live in this city are waiting for a house. And I have to tell them when they come to my surgeries, you may have to wait 5, 10, 15 years before you can be home, housed in a permanent house. And we can offer them hope. But we can only offer them hope if we win. And we are going to win. We're going to win here in Cape Town, we're going to win across the country, but we're only going to win if you, unionists, and your friends get out from now until the 8th of June and make sure that on those marginal seats that we speak to every single person. And if we win by one vote, it is a win, and we form the next government. Thank you.